Hi. After receiving some feedback from users, we decided to do something about the uh, form builders. If you remember or visited the website, you may have seen them as a, a list of seven possible options. And people have been saying, the users have been saying, that it's very hard to understand which uh, form to use for their specific DMC takedown. So what we've done is we've looked through all the different forms, found out the commonalities, found out the differences, and basically uh, created a, web, uh, a website form that actually incorporates all those. And so it makes life easier for you because you just choose the basic simple option which is listed here and you move forward step by step. Now this is a new form all in one, the DMC form builder. Now you'll see that it's got a progress bar. There's basically six steps. This will be the first one and you'll see the increments along as you do each one. Each one's got a title to explain what's necessary on that part of the uh, form and uh, eventually you'll get to a stage where you can then send your form off. Now as a typical user or a visitor who's not got an account or a non-subscriber you'll see this page first. Okay, The only difference between that one and the one that subscribers or admins or certain users on the website have is the fact it tells you that there will be a 20 cents charge for creating the form at the end you'll be paying via a PayPal transaction and uh, it will uh, describe the process for you as you reach that point. If you've ever done a PayPal transaction before you'll know how it works. Uh, it's quite simple. Uh, so this is the actual way that the whole thing works. Okay, What you may want to do is to understand which is the best option for you. The best way to do this is to simplify in words what you're expecting the uh, takedown to do. If you can do that, then you'll understand these options. I've actually written them as simple as I can as selectors, uh, but there will be a description appearing underneath as soon as you select one. But I'll go through these first so you kind of understand, and then we can take it from there. Okay, the first one, you create a DMC takedown and you receive it, that basically means you send it to yourself uh, even though it's got information for an infringing body and you can then forward it to that infringing body yourself. You may know their email address etc etc. Okay, So this is just a quick DIY way of getting a form made for you and then you can do the actual uh, work of sending it forward to whoever is the infringer. Now option two this is exactly the same as the one above. Okay. What the difference is, is you then, on this form, place in the infringer's email address and you can then obviously have, have the website uh, forward it to that infringer for you. can be a little bit more uh, simple for you to do this way. There may be reasons why you want to receive the actual form yourself. Uh, I should stay at this point though that all these uh, options you get a uh, backup copy yourself of the form that's sent and also all the data that's being made from this form so there's no reason to believe that you're not going to see something that's been sent you'll get a complete copy of everything that goes out okay now option three is uh, to make a DMC takedown and to send it to the ISP or the host of a website this is basically because you may find uh, a site that's selling something of yours uh, that's illegal uh, or they've used a picture of yours which uh, hasn't had permission. You send them uh, a, dear, a, a cease and desist order or a DMCA to the actual person and you find that nothing happens. They, they basically uh, ignore you. Now under the DMCA, if the ISP or the host uh, or the domain uh, company are situated in Europe or inside of uh, the American territories, they have to comply to a DMC takedown, which means hopefully that your request to remove uh, an infringing piece of artwork, photograph, image, whatever, will happen based on that, that simple fact that the law requires this. 
people who run websites, whether it's a blog, whether it's a, an online store that's not affiliated to a big company, can just ignore you. Uh, they pro tend to do this, whereas the, the actual hosting company can't ignore you because they're a registered company in uh, a territory which is under the DMC uh, guidelines, and so they have to legally do something about it. So that's a good option to use. I, that's the one I recommend. Okay. You'll also notice whilst I'm here, it says option three. Also, it says here for option three, who is. I'll talk about this when we get there, but this is just the link to where you need to actually basically uh, go to find a tool to get the information you'll need for the ISP and the host. Okay. Now, option four is kind of like the one above, uh, but what you'll notice is, uh, if you've been on my this site a lot, that I've created a, a section called takedowns. Now, I'll show you one, which is this one. Certain companies like Facebook uh, or uh, Twitter or Instagram have online forms. You just fill them in. And this is what this step-by-step uh, -step shows you, how to fill them in. And you send them off and they basically do the take down for you. It's all legal and binding like a typical DMC. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, some sites don't do this. And I'll show you an example of that. Let's go to this one. This is actually a hosting company. You think they'd know better than have an actual takedown thing. But you'll get this on their uh, DMC notification page. And it's just telling you that they do follow the DMC protocol. Uh, but the thing is that all they'll do is give you an address that you can write to, which basically is a long process. Or one of these options, when you'll notice one of those options is a uh, email address, so you can legally send a send a DMC notification to that email address okay I've, I've actually got it clicked there so you can just click it and open it yourself and do all the work yourself or you can use option 4 which allows you to select all the ones I've actually put down on this list of takedowns and it does it all automatically for you like I said like the previous ones as long as it's on the list it will go to that person you select okay Option five, uh, basically here, it's a similar again, it's just a typical DMC takedown, but it's specific to the fact that I've actually created what's known as a blacklist. Now, before I start understanding the term of blacklist, this is not saying that the sites listed here are responsible for these uh, infringements. Some of these sites are legal uh, shopping portals. It's just they have open access for people to create stores uh, like for instance Amazon, uh, Alibaba, eBay and those people are not monitored and so people can upload uh, illegal counterfeit products and so so on and then you know there's no way of actually finding out how you can get this takedown process going. So you'll notice there's quite a long list here. Okay, what option 5 does it gives you again a selection process of uh, choosing one of those sites as long as it's on that page it will be on that list and what this then does is it directs it automatically like uh, option 3 does whereas you have to put the uh, details in for the host and the ISP operator for the website this one option 5 if it's on the list it will automatically send it to the people who would normally be placed in in this form Okay, because I've actually done the legwork for you, found out who operates and runs these sites and populated the form so it actually automatically sends those on. Okay, now options six and seven are more specific. Uh, the reason that is that uh, these two companies, DHgate and Amazon, require more specific information to allow for a takedown. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. But they need this, else they will ignore your DMC takedown. You could, if you wanted to, just use any of the ones above, uh, if they're listed there. But they will just uh, disregard it because they need specific uh, documentation. And this is what this form, these two parts of the form do. They 
list the actual requirements and give you options to upload them or to add those uh, details so when you press send they get a specific form okay now that's it uh, I think that's reasonably simple to understand but if you don't understand even from these simple terms if you click on any of these items like if I go through them one it gives you a little bit longer definition of ha what's going to happen uh, if you choose option one and also you'll notice it will give you the requirements that you'll need personal details linked to the infringing material linked to your original work publication date and your PayPal information. Now it does say login, that doesn't mean you have to put any sensitive material in this form, it just means that when you go to the uh, what's called a gateway, it's called a PayPal gateway, uh, it will then lead you to uh, the PayPal website where you'd make the 20 cent transaction. Maybe I should tr uh, actually change this to say PayPal gateway details. Okay, now you'll notice if I click to the information is a little bit more extended or different then the the requirements are a little bit more different uh, three it also tells you here that you'll need to use this who is service which is here okay I'll just click on it to show you for this uh, purpose of this form it basically pops open this window and you just put the details into this thing called a domain dossier which I'll explain when we go through that one form and you can find out the necessary material option four now this is a little bit strange because obviously one of the uh, items I have on this thing if you look under company is Disney okay but the thing about Disney is it only needs you to uh, give them information about the website that you found and it doesn't even even need to be your work it can just be a tip and it's actually called the tip uh, hotline uh, so there is a difference with the uh, version 4 than there is to uh, all the other ones. So if you do just want to send a tip to Disney, you just click that one and we'll do that when we go through the form. And you'll notice there's obviously those uh, things as well. Also, you'll notice on this one and the last few, there's this option for actually doing a real signature. Now, you can do it using a mouse, but it helps if you have a drawing tablet linked to your computer. Uh, so be aware if you want to do that, if you want to do a real signature, that you'll have to have a stylus and uh, tablet okay option five as I said it's much the same stuff different details option six it tells you all about the DH gate and all the different things you will need for instance you'll need a scan of a passport or an ID okay you don't need to worry about the security on that because we actually put a big watermark and lock the PDF so nothing can happen to the PDF it's just for their records and you'll also need a, an image of your original in some form and we'll go through that when we actually make the form so you can see how that works okay and finally Amazon uh, tells you about Amazon's needs and also you'll need to have the ASIN number and the seller's name which is uh, visible on any of the actual pages of uh, Amazon and we'll show you how to do that as well so that's the form what you do is simply choose which one you want and click next and it'll go on to the next part of the form I'll do that in the next video I'll go through each one of these separately and show you how they all work so you know how it works and uh, hopefully you'll be able to use this in a little bit more simple way than the original forms and I hope your DMCA's takedowns are successful. Okay.